I see through you. What did you just do to me? I pushed your astral form out of your physical. In Marvel news. Mm -hmm. So we've got Spider-Man 3 and Doctor Strange 2. Larry's already heard this. Both movies have been moved back. Spider-Man has back. been Yeah, man. Spider-Man has been moved from July 2021 to November 2021. Doctor Strange has been moved from November 2021 to March 2022. But these are the rumors swirling around both movies. So Spider-Man 3 is set to have uh, a lawyer in the movie. And a lot are speculating that this introduction of a lawyer is going to be who's a lawyer in the Marvel Universe? Daredevil. They're speculating mm. Daredevil is going to also be in this movie. And it'd be the perfect time because who is the villain to not only Daredevil, but at times Spider-Man, the Kingpin. So, fellas, how would you feel about seeing Daredevil teaming up with Spider-Man going after Kingpin? And the, the the Sinister Six. I think it would be. I think it would be okay. I think they can. I think they can wing it pretty decent. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, yeah, well, give it a shot. <laughs> anything, <laughs> the, anything that's gonna, <laughs> if they're gonna do it in a Spider Man movie, they they have to do it right because for some reason, man, this, the. I don't know. It don't seem like the Spider-Man movie's just been having all that much luck. You know, every movie. I, I got to hold you right there, T-Stream. Mm -hmm. The very last Spider-Man, $1.3 billion with the B dollars. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, man. The very last one. So mm -hmm. the new, this new Spider-Man they've been using, he's been a fan hit, um, Tom Holland. He's been a hit. He's been the pretty ones good. Prior to that, he's pretty good. Yeah, he he's, right. yeah, he's yeah. like the third one, fourth one. Third? Yeah, yeah. He's the he's the third one. Yeah. They had Andrew Garfield and they had Tobey Maguire. Right. Yeah. Larry, what you think about the introduction of Daredevil into Spider-Man Three? Man, as long as they do his character better, better, more justice than they did on the on the Daredevil movie, because I thought the Daredevil movie was garbage. Yeah, it was garbage. <laughs> I, I hated that movie. I was so disappointed. I mean, the Daredevil movie was was disappointing. Elektra in there was disappointing. Mm. I mean, I mm. think I think the Daredevil series was better than uh, the Daredevil like series was much better than the movie. Right. But I'll tell you, I'm 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 okay with I'm okay with them bringing in Daredevil if it means that they will eventually bring in Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. Oh boy, look so at him! If look at him. I'm not worried about them bringing in the Punisher because I I eventually think he's going to get his own movie again. He's had his own movies in the past. I think he'll get his own movies again. But if they'll bring in Jessica Jones and Luke Cage into that, that'd be very very cool. Right. They never really bring the neighborhood the neighborhood crew into the major movies, so it'd be nice to see them. Well, you know, now that Marvel has got their um, shows that are going to be on Disney Plus, and they have their movie universe, and they've got all the characters, they are trying to do more of that. And in Doctor Strange news, to coincide with someone possibly coming in to the MCU, um, y'all know Sam Raimi is directing Doctor Strange too. He did the Spider-Man 2 that everybody liked. And Doctor Strange 2 Into the Multiverse is kind of exploring more of a grim, darker, kind of the um, magical realm of the Marvel comics. Keanu mm. Reeves was called in to do something in Phase 4 with Marvel. Now here is the rumors about who he's going to play. The rumor is he could possibly be making an appearance in Doctor Strange 2 as guess who? The Ghost Rider. What? I can see that though. I can yep. see that maybe. That, that could be fun. And they're also going to throw in an Easter egg about Mahershala Ali's blade into that same Doctor Strange universe because 
with him doing the, the uh, multiverse of darkness, this is all those evil characters that are kind of on the scary side. You've got um, the guy that controls your dreams, kind of like Freddy Krueger. You've got um, Surtur. You've got all these dark characters that they can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And this is just an introduction for people like Ghost Rider and Blade. T Streams, are you excited to see possibly a Ghost Rider, a Johnny Blaze, and a Blade all in the same universe? I think it. I think it would be very, very interesting, uh, especially seeing who who comes out as the top dog, right? Uh, and then too, seeing that to 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 revisit some of those characters that everybody familiar with, you know, that that sort of left things. Uh, opened in the past you know you want to see some some closure to them to them roles because in the comic books and the cartoons man they were like some some real like badass roles and then the, right. to make it to the big screen just to flop you know you like so, <laughs> um, yeah so so to, to 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 bring that dynamic into it i think it would i think it would definitely be great and i'd give it two thumbs up mm -hmm. uh especially if they can pull it off uh why while Marvel has the momentum, okay, they definitely have momentum with their with their films, with their theatrical releases. Mm -hmm. I think this would be a good time to go ahead and and pull that stuff together. I'm sure while everybody's at home, uh, their writers is just going off the chart, just drafting ideas. They they thinking how they gonna recover some of this money. And bringing some of this stuff, bringing some of this stuff around, is definitely some things that's going to get people out of their seats, out of their homes, back into the movie theaters. So I, I think it would, I think it would definitely be a, I definitely think it would be a good plus. Mm -hmm. But they got, they got to work it right. They, 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 they can't do it, you know, in the past with you know like bogus looking CGI and all this other kind of stuff. You're gonna do it. You might, you gotta come correct. Yeah. Well, y'all know I have total faith in Marvel. This new, this new phase of Marvel, I've got total faith in them. I'm a little worried if any of these rumors about Black Panther is true, but hey, we'll see because once once we can get past this corona, they're going to need to put some seats, I mean, some butts in some seats. And we, I'll, gonna... tell you, I'll tell you one thing I feel like they really need to do, which they haven't done much, either on, either on the the Marvel side or the DC side. They've done it a little bit on the DC side, but not really. They really need to start telling these backstories of the villains because mm. otherwise you have these villains that are out there. They're bad guys. They tell the backstory of the heroes and then they're just sort of beating up these, these bad guys, but you don't really get an idea of why these bad guys are bad and why they're so demented or how they got to be so powerful. It's hard to understand all that if you don't understand the backstory of them and they really need to start telling those stories. And they, you know, they did it with the Joker, obviously, on the DC side. They did it a little bit, but not really. They didn't do it well, but they did it a little bit in, in Birds of Prey with, uh, you know, with Harley Quinn. But they really need to do some more of that. They need to, they, on both sides, on both DC and Marvel, they need to tell that backstory. Because some of the, because some of the, uh, the villains, you know, they, they don't need to dispatch them every movie. It's not like they say, okay, this is the movie where we're going to dispatch Bane or this is the movie where we're going to dispatch whoever else. They could bring some of those villains back time and time again because they did. Those villains were there for for years in some of those stories, yeah. you know? And yeah. their backstory, their, the reason for them being the way they are is just, imp just as important as, as the reason why some of the superheroes are the way they are. Yeah, and a, super, I, a superhero is only as good as his villain is. Right. And so, you know, if you're just beating up a bunch of puny guys, then man, so don't nobody really want to see that. But you know, I, I'm a DC need to step up. Period. They, they <laughs> move to like yeah. garbage. Yeah. See, now, now I look at it like this: Marvel make really, really great movies, but they TV shows sort of like and they iffy. Yeah. He make. Crappy movies, but their TV shows are sort of on point, and, and their sort of animation point. is on point. Yeah, yeah. So they need to sort of restructure some things and get some things get some things right. Because if you can if you can get it right on the small screen, I'm sure you can on the big screen. Or, or at least you would think you can you can get it right on the big screen. And Larry, I completely agree with you. Some of these backstories to how some of these villains become evil 
is just as compelling as telling the story of the superhero. So DC yeah. is trying to do that with Black right. Adam. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I feel like, um, well, not Marvel per se, but Sony did it with Venom. Venom is not per se a hero, <laughs> but he's definitely not a good guy either. Yeah, it's they call like Venom is. Yeah, he's, he's like a like a An- anti-hero. anti-hero. He's like he's yeah. like he's sort of like Deadpool. He's a, sort of like an anti-hero where you like him, you root for him. He, he does the right thing, but in all the wrong ways. Exactly, and so. they and Marvel kind of teased in so many pieces the backstory of Thanos which that would be a great movie right by itself because right. this little guy and the way he came to power it, it, it was ridiculous that could be a good story they could do the backstory of dark side too um you know so let's just hope that we're going to be going in a direction where we can get some of those backstories because you could literally make a good superhero movie every three months with the way marvel has done it and with them now having all these characters um, uh, some of us geeks are a little worried that now that Marvel has all the properties, it's going to cut down on the amount of movies we see. But at the same time, we're hoping that if they do do that, it's sacrificed for the good of great content. Right. But no, just I look think- at look at how look at with just a little bit of backstory they gave us with Killmonger and Black Panther, and look how look at at how much it it enabled the audience to really help understand him and empathize with him and it really caused a lot of of i don't want to say confusion but conflict within the viewers you know the audience because how do you really hate and root against somebody that you understand their plight it makes it that much more difficult and just within the black community watching that and people listening to these conversations where people say well he was a good guy no he was a bad guy and you don't get that in you don't get that when you watch, you know, Batman. The Joker's a bad guy. I mean, they tried to do it somewhat this time, and I think some of the some of those white boys out there that were feeling all disenfranchised, they may be feeling some of that now, like we felt with Killmonger and Black Panther. They're like, well, maybe the Joker's not that bad of a guy, you know? <laughs> they but feel that like way Trump about Donald Trump. Trump. They feel that way about Donald Trump, Larry. That's their <laughs> hero. <laughs> right. I'm talking about they feel that that that's their hero. <laughs> yeah, so. he does have crazy hair and paints his face, so hey, you know maybe he is the Joker. Is. <laughs>